we have uh, a challenge today, okay? Uh, this is the last lesson for our uh, Intermediate Robots Online. So we have a robot, which is going to be pretty cool, okay? Uh, when the motors are moving, uh, the claws will close, and it will also lift up the, um, the sample towards the sensor, okay? So if you have a look at this, I'm gonna put my sample over here. So it can turn around, and then we can lower the motor. And then after you lower the motor, it automatically, it mechanically opens the arms as well, okay? And then when we close the motor, when we rotate it the other way, it's going to lift up the sample towards the color sensor. I just dropped my, my sample. All right, so that was just me moving it with my hands. But here is my uh, challenge for you, okay? You gotta design the code so that it lifts up its arms so that it doesn't knock over the sample when it turns around. Lifts up its arm, turns around to the left, and then lifts up the, the sample. It's either going to be yellow or purple. If it's yellow, I want it to show a smiley face and then put it into the blue box. If it's purple, I want you to show a sad face and then put it into the blue box. Okay, so that is our challenge today. All right. So this is now dropping the, the sample. So the opposite is lifting the sample. So what I want to do is I want to create a my block. One is called lift and one is called drop. Okay, so drop will be the first one. And then the second one is going to be called lift. And we always want to create my blocks because it's more readable for us. It's much easier to read what drop does and what lift does than to care about, you know, is it rotating anti-clockwise or clockwise and yada yada, all right? So here we go drop is this, but lift is going to be the opposite okay so we're going to lift it it's going this way so now who's who remembers what um what um initialization is for a robot who has heard of the word initialization what what we do at the start of the robots um program to make sure <coughs> me, that it always starts in the same position. And for the our initialization for this robot, what we want to do is two things. First of all, we want to lift its arms, okay? We want to lift its arms up so that we're not going to accidentally knock over these two samples, okay? So that's step one, is to lift our arms. Step two, is to make it so that we spin our arm around so that we are facing the middle here where the uh with the blue gap okay so the two steps for initialization is lift the arms and then to move so that we are facing the gap okay so let's try that so i'm going to create a new my block called init which is short for initialization I say that. What is initialization going to do? Initialization was two things, right? It was firstly, we lift the arm. Second thing is we move the large motor. So large motor is motor A to the middle. So we go uh, to movement.
And then we go. Um, oh no, we're going to motors up the top, sorry. We go A, shortest path to position zero. Because what that will do is it will force the motor to start with it at position zero. And when we use the shortest path command, it makes it so that it doesn't matter which way it was turned, it will always turn there at the shortest angle possible. And then when we run the code, we have to run the init code. So we go here, and then we go init. Okay. And then when you run the code, it should start with your robot arm looking up and facing the middle. Okay. Even if I if I change it, if I change the way that the arm arm is positioned, for example, and then I change the way that the arm is facing as well. If I run the init code, it's all going to re return back to normal. See? So we got to make sure that the robot is always starting in the same position. And that's called robot initialization. Another thing I've just noticed is that when it spins its arm around, it's still very, very quick. So I'm going to set motor A speed to be slower as well. Set motor A speed to 20. Okay. So now I can test my initialization code again. Start in a, with my robot arms facing all, all strange directions. But then as soon as I run my initialization code, it should return back to normal. See? Is we can turn it all the way to the side and not care about the angle because we just want to turn it all the way to the limit because our robot is already designed so that it mechanically stops ourselves from turning. So let's experiment with motor A. So we can go run motor A for two seconds. And then see what direction clockwise is. That's going to initialize, then run clockwise. So that's going to turn to the right hand side. I want to do the left hand side first. So let's try this one again. So anti-clockwise goes to the left. So first it's going to initialize, and then it goes to the left. Now what we do is we drop it and lift it. So we go into my blocks, and then we add drop to drop our arms, and then lift to lift the sample. All right. So let's have a go and see if our robot is going to do what we asked it to do. First, it's going to initialize. And then it turns around and it drops the arm, then it lifts the arm. Cool. And the next really cool thing is that you notice here on our, um, on our code, is that is that the um, over here on our port view for our color sensor? It's already sensing the color. It's sensing that it's purple, which is fantastic. Which is exactly what we wanted. Okay. Because after we see that it is purple, we want to show that it's smiling. So here we go control. Uh, and uh, actually, I'll create a um, another my block called scan because we want to scan to see what it what it is and then do something with it. So we go to my blocks, create a block, and call it scan. And 
and then we run a scan after we lift up the block. We'll do an if else block. If our sensor is sensing the color purple, then we're going to show a frown. For two seconds. Like this. Let's show a frown for two seconds. But otherwise, we'll show a smile for two seconds. So there we go, after we lift, then we scan. All right. So after we scan, then we do the same thing. We return to the middle and we drop. So uh, we can go motor, motor A, shortest path to zero. And then we drop. Oops. All right, so let's try this code. So first it's going to initialize. Go to the left, pick up my purple sample, show the frowny face and then drop it. So it works, which is good. And now we got to do the full thing. So we grab the sample on the left, scan and then drop it, and then grab the sample on the right and also scan and drop it. And then for lift, I feel like it's uh, it's a bit too hard, so I'm going to switch it to 15% so that it doesn't get knocked out of my hand. Then I'll try again. All right, so initialize. Whoops, because uh, it needs to lift it for longer. That's why. So that's the problem with the lift. If I if I turn it slower, I also have to turn more, uh, as in more time. So I'll have to adjust that. So I go back into here. And then it's see how it's handy now with our um, with our my blocks, because if I didn't have my blocks, then uh, changing it like this would take a lot more time. All right, let's try it now. Initialize. Go to the left, pick up the first bit, smiley face, and it drops it. And it goes to the second one, lifts it up, sad face, and drops that one too. So now this is a successful run of our automated code.